What's up, Lazy Dog fam? Hope everybody out there is having an incredible day. Our soil has finally dried after all that rain we had this past weekend. And so today we're going to get the rest of our tomatoes in the ground, get our peppers in the ground, and get our eggplant in the ground. I'm excited. I hope you're excited too. So let's get started. So we got two different plots we're going to be working in today. We have this plot right here that's going to get our indeterminate tomatoes. And then we have this plot right here, which already has some determinate tomatoes in it. We'll check on those in a minute. This is where our peppers and eggplant are going to be going in these two rows right here. So here's all those determinate tomatoes we planted about a week ago. They took a little bit of beating from that storm and all that wind and hard rain, but they're hanging in there, haven't lost any plants. I haven't started really growing yet, but I see a little bit of new growth on them, so they should take off pretty soon. Now, as you can see from me showing you the two plots we're going to be planting in today, I've already got furrows made. I've already got drip tape in those furrows. So really all we got to do before we plant is put our pre-plant fertilizer down in those furrows. But before we do that, I want to talk to you a little bit about the different types of drip tape we use and a little trick about installing the row in so it doesn't leak as bad. So there's two brands of drip tape that we use or have used here on our homestead. This right here is the Rivulus brand. And on this one, you can see the emitters by those little holes right there. So it's an actual punched hole. And then this tape here has these little channels between the emitters or the holes there that's supposedly supposed to help with equal water distribution along the tape there. So the water comes out of this little hole and then it kind of travels along that channel there to fill the gaps between the emitters. I'm not sure that works so well when it's buried, but that's what it's there for. And then the other brand that we use is this Eartech tape right here. Now this is a good bit different, although it's still eight mil drip tape. So instead of having a hole where the emitters are, it's just got a little slit there and sometimes that's kind of hard to see unless you turn the tape on and you can see a little water dripping out of there. This doesn't really have the channels like the Rivulus tape does. It's just got the two green lines there that lets you know, okay, it needs to be facing this way and not that way. So those green lines just tell you which direction the tape needs to be facing. Now, even though this is eight mil tape, just like that Rivulus tape I showed you earlier, this tape here does seem to be a little tougher. It doesn't you know, get cuts and nicks in it as bad as that Rivulus tape does. So I do like this tape for that. It's a little more simple as far as the design goes, but it's just as effective in my opinion. And there are other brands of drip tape out there besides this Rivulus and Eartech tape that we use. I think Toro makes one called Aquatrax. I've never used it personally, but I know a lot of small scale market farmers use it and say good things about it. So lots of different choices there. Each brand is gonna have some pluses and minuses to it, but we like this Eartech tape for the most part. Now, the only downside I've found to the Eartech tape has to do with these row ends right here and how they are installed. Now on the Rivulus tape, like we see here, it doesn't matter where you cut this tape, where you install that row end there, you don't really have to worry about any leaking out the end. But on this Eartech tape, which I told you I like a little better because it seems to be a little more durable, you do have to worry about where you cut it and where you install this row end here. So there's an emitter right there we can see. Now if we cut this tape at the end of the row, you know we could cut it kind of anywhere along here at the end of the row. If we cut it right here with that emitter right there at the end of the tape and then we install this fitting, it's going to leak. So we do not want to fold up that emitter there into this row end fitting because it's almost always going to leak. I have found that to be true. So when I'm installing this ear tech tape, I always want to cut it kind of right Let me go get a little more there. There we go. Cut out that emitter. And so we've got 11 inches or so of tape here before there's another emitter. And if we install this row in here now, like this, fold it three times, put it in there like that, it's not gonna leak. But if that fold includes an emitter, it will leak like crazy. So that's just a little tip when using this particular brand of tape, you gotta be careful where you cut it at the end of a row. 
And one last thing about drip tape before we get started planting. A lot of people get hung up on the emitter spacing. They say, well, I want to plant things 18 inches apart or two feet apart. Can I get drip tape with two foot emitter spacing? Or maybe they're planting something really close and they want a six inch emitter spacing. Now you can find drip tape with eight and six inch emitter spacing, but we use the 12 inch emitter spacing on everything we plant, regardless of what the actual seed or plant spacing is. All the big commercial farmers around here do the same thing. 12 inch emitter spacing is pretty much the standard. Don't get caught up in, you know, the gaps between there. It's not a big deal. Everything will be sufficiently watered with a 12 inch emitter spacing. All right, so now let's put some pre-plant fertilizer in these furrows so we can get to planting. Now, when we planted those determinate tomatoes, those two rows over there, I told you that in this plot, instead of using Nature Safe 855 as a pre-plant fertilizer, we're using Nature Safe 1300 based on the results of our soil test that told us we had plenty of a phosphorus and potassium in this plot. So that's what we're going to do with the peppers there. We'll put 1300 in the furrows there. But on this plot where our indeterminate tomatoes are going, our soil test told us that we didn't have near as much phosphorus and potassium here. I think our phosphorus was at an acceptable level, but it wasn't super high. Potassium was a little low. So for this plot, we're going to use Nature Safe 10 to 8 as a pre plant fertilizer. So the Nature Safe 855 and 1300 come in these pellets right here. Kind of looks like chicken layer pellets. But the 10 to 8 looks a good bit different. So this is it right here. And this looks like chick food, pretty much little crumbles here. It should still work pretty good. So we did half one of these scoops of the 1300 for each of these 30 foot pepper and eggplant rows. And because these rows here are longer, about 40 to 45 foot long, and this plot wasn't as nutrient dense on the soil test, I put a full scoop of that 10 to 8, and you can see those little crumbles in the furrow there. So we'll start off with the peppers first, and we got some beautiful looking pepper transplants here. This is the X3R, it's the bell pepper variety we're planting this year, and we step these up. So we started out in a PropTech 162 tray, then we stepped them up to these little heavy duty two and a half inch sun pack pots here. And I've really liked using these pots as step up pots. And I like the fact that they're not throwaways that we can use them again. If we just kind of squeeze them a little bit, we can pull that out of there. You see, we got some nice little root ball there, not wrapped at all. And that puppy should start growing pretty quick when we put it in the ground. All right, so we got all our plants laid in the furrow there on a two foot plant spacing. All these pots are color coded by variety, which helped me kind of separate them out here. And then I wrote all that down on this piece of paper. So I have me kind of a planting map. So on this row, we've got bell peppers and then yellow sweet peppers, the Cornito Giallo. And then all the rest of this row is the Santa Fe Grand Pepper which is the one we liked the most making hot sauce last year. So I'm really gonna ramp that up and try to perfect my recipe with a bunch of those. Then over here we have kind of more of the hotter peppers. We've got Pueblo Chili, Buena Mulata, Big Jim. We've got some Tabasco, and then we've got some eggplant there on the end. And I know my row spacing looks really, really wide, and it is, but for good reason. So since I'm fortunate enough to have extra garden space. I like to space these rows five feet apart, six feet apart sometimes. That gives me plenty of room to get between the rows and harvest, drag my basket between the rows, have the kids in there, and everything's not so crowded at harvesting time. The other reason for spacing them out so much has to do with spraying. We're inevitably going to have to spray these with a fungicide, probably an insecticide as well. If the rows are really tight, it's hard to get in there and kind of spray the entire plant. So I want plenty of room to stand in there and be able to get really good coverage. That's the key with organic products, insecticides or fungicides. Coverage is the key and we can get better coverage if we got a little more space to spray everything evenly. Now with these peppers here, you can plant them deep if you want to, but it's not like tomatoes where you're gonna really benefit from the extra root structure if you plant them deep. 
if these were really root wrapped i might break apart this root ball a little bit but they're not root wrapped at all so i'm just going to kind of put them in this furrow here and plant them kind of somewhat even with the existing soil level there so i'm not going to plant them super deep and i'm just going to cover up this tape as i go along here skip over two feet i like how easy these are coming out of these pots here put that puppy right there cover it up and keep going I'm watching the sunset on Tennessee hills I wish I could capture it I never will cause I'm not a painter can't stay in the lines just sitting here sipping on the all right all right all right we got those in looking good there we got our pots we can save for another year or another season and so when these plants get about two foot tall or so we'll start setting up our florida weave trellis on the peppers the eggplant and these tomatoes over here i might cage these three cherry tomatoes but everything else is going to get the florida weave still got a little space left in this pot we left that end over there for a row of basil we got a good eight row feet to play with here so i don't know what i'll stick in that spot there i might just leave it for the time being and uh if we come up with anything we'll throw something right there now over here where we're going to plant these indeterminate tomatoes we have things set up much differently because we're going to trellis these much differently before i tell you about that let me show you my main line set up here which is a little different than what i do in all the other plots so i have it teed off somewhat in the middle here but where i have it teed off right past there i have valves on each side of the main line and the reason i did that is because obviously we're going to have tomatoes here but over here we're going to have corn which has different nutrient and water needs than the tomatoes more nitrogen more water likely here than right here with the tomatoes so with these valves i can water the tomatoes and the corn at the same time if i want or i can just water and fertilize one at a time just with those little valves there i can turn those on and off really easily that way i can treat the tomatoes how they need to be treated and the corn how it needs to be treated so let me try to tell you how i'm planning on doing these indeterminate tomatoes i've always wanted to try trellising them like this it may work it may be an epic fail but at least we're going to try so i have these two rows space 10 feet apart and you may say wow that's way too far apart for two rows of tomatoes but bear with me just a second so i'm going to try a drop string trellising technique much like you may have seen on josh satin's video trellis to make you jealous so what we're going to do is we're going to put up eight foot tall t posts on the top of those posts we're going to put a pvc t and then we're going to run conduit between those t's and have almost like a clothesline there then i'm going to use s hooks because they'll hang on to that conduit better than tomahooks will i'm going to use s hooks i'm going to wrap a good little supply of string around them and then the string's going to drop straight down i'm going to use clips to wrap or connect the string to the tomato stem and then we'll just add clips as we go we'll have to aggressively prune these to keep a single stem going there and then hopefully once they get as tall as where that conduit is with those s hooks i can just slide them around and do kind of a lower and lean thing here now with my particular setup what differs from his and why i put the rows so far apart is some of these indeterminate varieties i think are going to grow a lot taller than others so i want to give myself plenty of space to kind of move them along the clothesline there and at the ends of the row here instead of just having one line of conduit and t-post and then another line i'm going to connect them at the end so it makes this huge rectangle and i can just slide them all the way around kind of like you see at the dry cleaners so i don't know if that's going to work or not but in my mind it's going to work and so that's what we're going to try to do so we're going to put these plants every three feet along the row here i'm going to space them out a little further because these plants will get bigger so we'll have our t-posts and conduit running down that way we'll also have a piece of conduit connecting this row to that row 
and then the T post and conduit running that way and then they will be connected at the end there as well and that'll give me just a little extra room to move things around if some varieties start outgrowing the others and yes I probably could have put the rows five feet apart and just cut a piece of 10 foot conduit in half and did it that way I'm planning on using 10 foot pieces of conduit by the way but I wanted to give plenty of space between these two rows in the case that this does work I can get in there and film it and show you guys if everything was too tight I couldn't get in there and film it and show you all the beautiful tomatoes that hopefully we're going to grow so some of the reason I'm doing this is for film quality some of it is for just giving myself a little extra room to play with all right so we got our plants laid out there just like we did with the peppers and that's going to be an absolute heap of tomatoes if this works but go big or go home right so we've got on this end over here we've got rose giant crimson kellogg's and german johnson four plants of each and then on this row here we have paul robinson dr wachi's georgia streak and big zach on the end there four plants each of these as well now these indeterminate tomatoes like this rose here are absolutely massive these things were planted back in mid-january i believe and we wanted them about this size because we wanted a good head start on the growing season before things get too hot but these things are huge and we're going to try to plant them real deep since the last planting video i found my trowel a little blonde haired boy had put it somewhere but i found it so we're going to use our trowel to plant these things as deep as we can I kind of been letting that drip run there so we can get us a nice deep hole down there and these should come out of these pots here pretty easily these are a little dry a little bit root wrap there but not too bad we'll shove them down in there and then put as much soil around them I had a lot of people asking about why we don't clip off these leaves while we just cover them up I've never found any reason to clip them off my opinion clipping them off would just create an open wound for you know soil borne diseases to enter into so i don't clip them i just bury them and sometimes we'll come in here and heal these tomatoes pull more dirt up around these plants we may do it with some of these since we can only plant them that deep when we heal tomatoes we just pull dirt right up around them leaves and everything and never have any issues so i don't see any reason to you know prune the leaves before you bury them but if it makes you feel better go for it Okay, I'm glad that's all of them. That's 32 mater plants right there, not counting the ones we got over there. That's a bunch. Now I can already hear my wife now. Why in the world did you plant so many tomatoes? I don't know, just kind of felt like it. I had a bunch of plants in the greenhouse, still got a bunch of plants. I could plant more tomatoes if I wanted to. But I really wanted to give this trellising technique a try and I figured I couldn't just half, you know what it, um, so had to do it somewhat big to see if it would really work for us. Now one of my main concerns with using this trellising technique besides just being able to keep up with the pruning and clipping and all that is the sun damage. Because we're going to be pruning these aggressively to a single stem we're not going to have as much foliage to protect the fruits and down here the sun is intense and it can burn the fruits some. So if you've ever tried this in a southern climate Tell me your experiences. Did you have a lot of sun damage on the tomatoes or am I worrying about something that's not gonna be a problem? And now that we've got our indeterminate tomatoes in the ground, I wanted to remind you about our big tomato growing contest that we're doing with Eddie over there at Poor Boy's Little Homestead. So we're doing this with two varieties, the Kellogg's Breakfast Tomato and the Big Zack Tomato. We got our Kellogg's from MI Gardener and you can use the code LazyDogFarm for 10% off if you wanna buy some seeds there. 
the big Zach seeds, we got those from seeds and such. And I think they were one of the only places that carried that particular variety. And the rules are pretty simple. You just want to grow the biggest tomato. And you got to take a picture of it and share it on Instagram or Facebook. A picture of the tomato on the scale so we can see how much it weighs. We're not setting a end time for this contest. We want to give everybody a fair shot. But if you win, you'll get a big jug of AgriThrive fertilizer, which would be a nice little prize there. So not only do we want people to share their pictures of the tomatoes, share the pictures of you planting the tomatoes, of the tomatoes growing, however you're trellising them, all that. So take a picture of your Big Zac or your Kellogg's tomatoes if you're playing along and uh, put those on Facebook or Instagram. Use the hashtag BigMater, tag Lazy Dog Farm so we can see your progress. Oh, and I forgot to mention, the folks over at Heavenly Hills Homestead have decided to sweeten the pot on the prize, and they're going to add in a bottle of this stuff called Prevagenics. I think that's how you pronounce it. Anyway, it's like a microbial supplement. They use it a lot to grow their giant pumpkins and other giant produce. So not only will you get the big jug of AgriThrive fertilizer if you win for each variety, but you'll also get a bottle of this Prevagenics good stuff too. So now that all the tomatoes, all the peppers, all the eggplant have been planted, we can move on to another crop. So coming up soon, we'll be getting cukes and squash in the ground, then probably pumpkins in the ground. And then we also got to get back in the greenhouse and plant our okri transplants. Got to get those started. Probably going to do several different varieties there. So still lots to go as far as our spring planting goes, but we're just going to knock it out a little bit at a time and we'll have it all done probably by mid-April or so. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure to check out our affiliate links below. A lot of great companies that we use in our gardens here at Lazy Dog Farm. We've got some coupon codes so you can take advantage of those discounts. Don't forget to go check out our website, lazydogfarm.com, where we've got recipes, our garden journal, recommended products, and some cool Lazy Dog Farm hats and shirts. If you did enjoy this video, make sure to subscribe, hit that notification button, like and share and we'll see you next time right here at lazy dog farm well mm -hmm. by the beauty of your life